How is up, everybody? It's your boy, Choopy Choosy, back in the clack with another extreme stream. Hey, listen, man. Fire Emblem at its core has always been a rigid game of numbers. It's ultimately the makeup and distribution of your unit's stats that determines their strengths, weaknesses, and affinities. Understandably, the copious amount of hard numeric data this game throws at you can prove to be a little overwhelming at times, especially to those new to this highly unique series. However, the latest entry in the series, Fire Emblem Three Houses, does a phenomenal job of presenting that data in a way that's coherent and meaningful to even casual players. Aggro lines effectively illustrate enemy targeting behaviors and updates in real time as you advance through your player phase. Hovering over specific enemy units gives a preemptive forecast of the damage they could potentially be inflicting on your units after your turn ends. When initiating an attack on an enemy unit, you're able to cycle through your inventory and get a feel for how each weapon, when equipped, will affect your unit's overall performance in combat. You're then able to see your unit's performance stacked against your target and get a scrolling forecast of all possible outcomes of that battle. Needless to say, the amount of quality of life features this game provides is unprecedented and truly empowers players of all skill levels to think strategically and run the numbers before they run hands. Yet, despite all these UI improvements, one of the most important factors of a unit's performance weapon weight is straight up never explained. Which to me seems very odd, because it's so integral to not only the way combat plays out, but it's also a defining component to every single unit build in this game. Unfortunately, because of the lack of clarity with how weight influences your unit's combat performance, there is a huge misconception of how beneficial skills and accessories that manipulate weight actually are. So if you want to get a comprehensive understanding of the weapon weight mechanic in order to maximize the potential of all your units, or if you just want to understand what the hell it even does in the first place, then this is the guide for you, and with that, let's get right into it. Weight is a stat that's found on every single equipable item. A general rule of Fire Emblem logic is that the more powerful a weapon is, the more it weighs. Now why weight is so important is because it's one of the main stats that affects your attack speed, or AS. Essentially, your attack speed is just your speed stat reduced by the weight of whatever you have equipped. If your attack speed is at least 4 points higher than your opponent's, then you will perform a secondary follow-up attack during combat. It's also the base value for your avoidance, the number that's subtracted from the enemy's hit rate and determines the odds of you avoiding attacks altogether. Being able to double and avoid is the difference between life and death in many scenarios and is one of the main reasons why staying light and speedy has always been a dominant strategy in the series. However, in this entry, the penalty for being slow and heavy is mitigated somewhat by your strength stat. If you're strong enough, you won't suffer a speed penalty for carrying heavier weapons and shields, so essentially every 5 points in strength allows you to nullify 1 point of equipped weight. For example, my Lysathea has exactly 25 strength, which means she can equip a weapon with 5 weight and not suffer any speed penalties. Her attack speed is essentially her base speed stat at this point. Notice how when switching between the 4 weight training sword and the 5 weight iron sword, my attack speed does not change. I can even customize my setups to plan around the attack speed coefficient and the weight of my equipped weapons. For example, I really like the extra accuracy that the training sword provides, especially when I need to bop this speedy assassin with 24 attack speed. But since the training sword only has 4 weight, I'm actually able to equip a leather shield of 1 weight in tandem get one extra point of physical protection, and still not suffer any speed penalties because the total weight of all my equipped weapons is still less than or equal to 5. So with all the beneficial avenues that having low weight opens up for setups and builds, it's not hard to understand why the C rank armor ability Weight-3 is currently viewed as a universally viable investment for all units and builds. I've been asked so many times since the game has dropped whether this ability is actually worth the instructional investment or even giving up an ability slot for. Explaining my thoughts on this ability is pretty much why I'm making this video in the first place, honestly. Heck, in my first run, I even went through the trouble of teaching it to my main offensive mage, Annette, because I visualized how beneficial it would be to both her offensive and defensive capabilities. But after much first-hand experience, research, and deliberation, I've come to the conclusion that this skill, in the majority of scenarios, is incredibly redundant and not worth catering your builds around its utilization. The first reason I feel this way is because training weapons are already so effective at granting high hit rate and avoid when needed, and should remain a fixture of your inventory right up until the final boss. 
forging them into their plus variants drops their weight even further by two points. So in scenarios where you're trying to achieve the maximum amount of avoidance and hit rate, which will be quite often, having less overall weight in these scenarios will not benefit the outcome in any way. And while sure, you could argue that it opens up equipping heavier shields in conjunction with light weapons, like I did in my earlier example, you'll find that the benefits that shields provide early game quickly become overshadowed by accessories with zero weight. On top of all this, and my second reason for why weapon weight minus isn't worth the investment, is that weight isn't even calculated against magic avoid. Yes, much like how protection and resilience mitigate physical and magical damage separately, this game has two separate calculations for physical and magical avoid, but for some reason the game doesn't tell you about this, and based on the description for avoidance, actually misleads you into believing avoid is a universal for all attacks. So there's half the matchups in the game where weapon weight isn't even a factor in your performance. My third reasoning for the redundancy of this ability is the makeup of enemy units in this game. Enemies tend to be incredibly min-maxed in the speed department. Either they're armor knights with 0 to 15 attack speed, or war masters, assassins, and falcon knights with highly competitive or even capped speed stats. Enemies are going to be doubled by basically everyone on your team, or everybody on your team is going to be struggling not to be doubled by them. Stacking multiple weight minus abilities natively on armors, for instance, isn't going to make them suddenly competitive against speedsters. If their speed stat is 5, their attack speed and their base avoidance is never going to go beyond that number. You might as well accept the fact that they're slow and tanky and embrace it. Load them up with the most powerful and the heaviest equipment you got, build for tanking multiple attacks and one-shotting on the follow-up. If you're worried about the weight making you more susceptible to magic attacks, remember, weight isn't a factor in magic avoid, so who cares? You shouldn't really be putting your armor in range of magic either way. For your units that are already inherently fast, and maybe you're considering going out of your way to get that C armor rank to help them use heavier weapons against faster enemies, I'd say it's totally not worth it. There is already an ability that is so much easier to learn and obtain, and it does everything that weight minus does, and more. It's called speed plus two. Having more speed does the exact same thing as having less weight. Except that speed will also benefit your magic avoid, and further enhances the effectiveness of light weaponry, whereas minus weight will not. Better yet, forget all this using up an ability slot nonsense, and just use the greenhouse for consumable stat boosters. If you plant pale blue flowers over three weeks, you will get three permanent speed stat boosts. Sure, using heavier weapon types is still going to penalize you, but the result number for your avoid and attack speed will still be exactly the same as if you had weight minus 3 equipped, and you won't be wasting an ability slot or your limited instructional sessions to do so. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching the video. By the way, armors are my favorite units. I'm just sad that weight minus 3 is so dumb and doesn't benefit them. And anyways, uh, I want to thank the patrons because I haven't had them in a scroll in so long and they keep on supporting me despite me uh, meandering through the Fire Emblem universe and not really having a topic I like to settle on. I wake up in the morning and I think about you guys and it makes me want to f that And I want to thank all of you for joining me on another quest to discover the mysteries of the emblem. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, y'all, stay frothy.